is an accidental some three, four, five days back. This, this, uh, Swami Bhakti Neskama Santa Swami who is sitting uh, right side. Uh, and along with his colleague Purushottama Jagannath Das, uh, White Trust, both the Swamis don't think they are going to uh, preach any religious things. They are going to speak science only. That's why I have permitted them. And I have given a slot, one hour of time for them. So, uh, B.M. Santa Swami is a PhD candidate. PhD candidate. And uh, he is going to talk on a topic. Sorry, Darwin. Chemistry never made the transition to biology. Sridevi, you know Swami Gar Matar Vedi, Sari Darwin, Chemistry never made the transition to biology. That's the topic. The other colleague, Prashad Jagannath Das, again, he is a PhD candidate. He is going to speak on cellular sentience. So both the topics are the science related topics. So okay, let us hear from them. Uh, I thought it would be useful for the uh, students of our college and also the faculty. Now I request him that the PM Santa Swami to speak on the subject. Sorry, Darwin, chemistry never met. Can I sit, sit and be because my health is not so good? Ah, no problem. Okay. Thank you very much, Muspalji uh, uh, of uh, this Agriculture College, Sir, what's your name? And, uh, Professor Naiduji and all the faculty members and uh, students of this college. Uh, we are very happy to visit your campus, very you know, auspicious place, Tirupati. Uh, every year once we visit, our center is located in uh, Sinabadi Dham, uh, near Calcutta, Ninth Island, on the bank of Ganges. Myself did my PhD in IIT Kharagpur in Ocean Engineering, and uh, uh, Master's I was in IIT Guwahati in Trade and Thermal Science. And also obtained my B.Tech in Utkar University, and also I worked as a visiting scientist in South Korea in World's Second Best Lab, that is Korea Ocean Research Development Center, 40. During my PhD, I found some interest in fundamental topics like life and its origin. In IIT Kharagpur, there was a conference that was on aging and dying. We are all going towards old age, we are all going towards death. So they wanted to discuss whether the person on the verge of death, uh, thinking him as a chemical, can we kill him? That was the issue they were discussing. Thinking him as a chemical, because he is a bottom of society, he is not going anywhere. So my Guru Maharaj came, many scientists came, he also PhD from University of California. And they all together concluded that life is beyond molecules. So we cannot disrespect life. Next slide. So before going into my talk, I would like to offer my humble prayers to my Divine Masters. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Salakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Ainatasme Sri Gurave Namaha Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Sarudamadar Swami Tinamini Namo Sadhvakta Mane Manipur Bhavaja Prabhupada Shadavani Pachar Nirtayati Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Sri Gaurav Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare This light you can give. This light. So, uh, my Guru Maharaj, uh, he was being given special task by his Gurudev, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, that he must help the scientists understand life scientifically. So, he travelled all over the world and convinced many Nobel Prize winners that life is beyond molecules. He talked with many, many Nobel Prize winners. This light, can you give me? So, uh, many scientists and many scholars so they visited uh, the, you know, our institute and they accepted that life is beyond this physics and chemistry. So, next slide. 
So today I am going to discuss this topic. You can download the full paper, scienceandscientist.org slash biology. You can note down the website, scienceandscientist.org slash biology, where I have referred more than 145 papers. Is it possible to give that back also? It's possible. This blue switch? Okay. That light, that light is okay. Okay, this one light is okay. So, he was actually explaining that, uh, you know, what is the difference between matter and light. In this paper, uh, we have referred more than 145 articles from Nature and Science, which explains that uh, the recent scientist, 21st century biology, moving towards a new direction. You are all biology students, right? You study biology? Yes. How many of you study biology? Raise your hands. All, all, all. All, all study. Yeah. And tell me the difference between chemistry and biology. One person, raise the hand. Raise your hand. What is the difference between chemistry and biology? Who can say? Yes, you are studying biology, no? Tell me. Today we are going to discuss the difference between chemistry and biology. Next. There are three systems, mechanical system, chemical system and biological system. There is a bicycle, there is sodium chloride and there is cell. In plant also, plant, plant also you see cells, right? So what is the difference between three systems? Anybody wants to say? No, after your speech we will uh, interact. No, we wanted, I wanted to ask a question. What is the difference between these three systems? Mechanical system, a bicycle, a sodium chloride salt is there or H2O, and there is a cell. What is the difference? You see, in a bicycle, there are so many nuts, uh, there are nuts and bolts which connect different parts. A mechanic, if you go, he can dismantle whole all the parts and give you, okay, take your bicycle and you assemble elsewhere, wherever you want, right? And you can do that. And the handle remains handle, the chain remains a chain. Do you understand? The parts, if you break a rock, it becomes two rocks. Planets are related by some external relation, that is gravity. And gravity doesn't depend on the uh, combination or the composition of that planet. It depends on mass. Do you understand? So, but when you come to chemical system, if you separate hydrogen and oxygen, they exhibit different properties. And they are connected together by chemical bonds. In mechanical system, they are connected by some external force. In a cell also, there are so many like different constituents. DNA, RNA, membrane, enzymes. There are so many different you know, chemicals. How they are connected together? What connects them? They are actually talking with each other. What is connecting them? Yes? Tell me what, what you want to say. Life. So what is that uh, scientific term for that? They are telling in biology now it is a sentience. You search for one paper, uh, bacteria is small but not stupid by James A. Shapiro. He is a well known biologist. He published many papers in Nature and Science. And in abstract itself, you will find even bacteria is sentient. You know that plants are exhibiting consciousness, proved by Indian scientists, both. Huh? So, what is that uh, uh, constituent? or what is the chemical combination which produce consciousness is impossible to conceive. If I separate all those parts in a cell and tell, okay, take take this man, I separate hand, leg, everything, take this man and we assemble. Will it possible to assemble it? Huh? How much chemical bonding you do, how much nuts and bolts you fit, is not possible. You understand? There is some fundamental difference between these two systems that we have to understand. First of all, this is the starting point. Next. And uh, biologists were thinking that uh, life having a chemical origin, and uh, they were claiming you know, dogmatically uh, following the Darwin's idea of one little pawn, but they could not answer two questions. What is the minimum number of parts that are essential for a living organism to survive? You cannot say for a cell also. What is the minimum number of parts? And what is the mechanism needed? They don't know. Next. Previous 
actually they were thinking there is abiogenesis and metogenesis idea means first life came from inorganic substance and organic substance. They are thinking from meat first life came and uh, many big scientists like Newton, Harvey, Descartes and many many other persons they were with faith, with strong faith they were accepting that idea. But one scientist Francis Rodrigue, he did this simple experiment. He taken three jars and uh, kept the meat in three jars. One jar is open to air, one is covered with a cloth, and third one sealed. And after a few days, he finds those insects. In the first one, which is open to air, next one on the top of the cloth, third one no insects. That's why he proved there are some flies which are coming and laying eggs. Life can only come from life. It cannot come from non-life. That's what he proved. Life is needed for production of life. And famously, which pasture conducted the experiment uh, with his one you know, flash experiment to establish a known, only one theory is known to scientists for life, that is biogenesis. This is the one provable theory known to the scientists, that is biogenesis. Life can only come from life. Next. Soon thereafter, uh, Darwinist proposed uh, much more complicated, uh, what I can say, proposal that we accept uh, Louis Pasteur for all lives, not for the first life. We accept Louis Pasteur's phenomena for all lives, not for the first life. So, every day we are seeing sun is rising in the east. And one person will come and tell me that first sun rise in the west. So, shall I, shall I not ask for proof for him? Because I am seeing, every day life is coming from life. And you say first life comes from non-life. Then you should provide a sufficient proof for such a proposal. And scientists could not provide single evidence. Next. So, they were dogmatically accepting such idea for hundreds of years, uh, for more than 120 years, 130 years, until this uh, primordial bombardment concept came in modern science. You know, in nature, they are pro producing articles on this primordial bombardment. They say that our earth was experiencing very harsh environment much after the proposed date for first life origin. They proposed three or four million years back, first life originated, right? So they are saying much later, our Earth was experiencing some big planets were coming and colliding with this, and it was creating a lot of heat energy, so that will not allow any life to survive in our planet. So if such life has been created, that has to be created many, many times. And such a thing is impossible. That's why one of the famous scientists, James Casting, he is a well-known scientist in that field of primordial compartments. And he says, the field is in ferment. Origin of life field is in ferment. So now, it's a big problem in origin of life theory. Many scientists, uh, space scientists especially, <coughs> challenging that idea. So, uh, the one of the paper published in, the, in science, you know science magazine? You have science magazine in your uh, this library? Yes, yes. You have it. Okay, you can go through 1990 Mitchell's article. Uh, the title is Goodbye to the Warm Little Pond. Goodbye to the Warm Little Pond. This is Darwin's idea, goodbye, uh, because Warm Little Pond was the idea given by Darwin to his botanist friend. There's some in a warm pond, some chemicals come together and first life formed. So, this paper completely challenges that and rejects that idea. And first paragraph reads, sorry Charles, your warm little pond was a beautiful image. It's been enshrined in innumerable textbooks as the scientific theory of the origin of life. But to hear the planetary scientists talking these days, uh, you were dead wrong. The, the warm little pond never existed. This is the first paragraph itself. And many, many challenges he presents in that. And it is world's top journal. It's not, you know, it's uh, like impact factor is very high. And everybody respects science and nature. Such journals, they are publishing such articles. That's why in 2005, Science Magazine published a special issue because it is 120th birthday of Science Magazine. If you just type in Google, what don't we know, you type this much and you find this issue. And they say that because it is 120th birthday, we are publishing 125 questions which science don't know. One of the questions is, how and where did life arise on our Earth? Science don't know. Next. They were speculating many ideas now. Life came from other planets. Uh, it came in thermal vents. So many ice, 
so many ideas they are giving and everything has its own you know faults and advantages and there is a conflict how it happened where it happened not not a confirmed idea is being known and uh, if you say chemically life form it has to pass through those six steps primordial soup polymerization pre rna world rna world dna protein world and primitive cell next so oprin and harding the well known biologist you know and they provide the theory uh, for chemical origin of life in the primordial soup theory and they claimed that there are natural forces which created the first life okay and famously miller uh, stanley miller provided experimental support for that next so there is a thermodynamics challenge for miller's idea you know that natural forces cannot produce any useful work you go sit on a sea beach sometimes waves are coming and they may create nice structure by the sand but you don't expect that waves will keep on coming and you know some temple will form from that sand because what is creating that is also destroying so natural forces without any mechanism cannot give you useful work that's why you need clock machine you need air conditioner machine that's why we a designer is needed to design certain things otherwise if you say solar energy is there it is useful but it's not possible you need a mechanism for that life has a mechanism actually a cell has a mechanism without having a, a proper mechanism the energy unguided energy is useless next actually miller used the electric spark so lightning produce those biomolecules then that lightning can damage those biomolecules so he separated the whole molecules in a separate jar so who does that work in the primordial soup is a question and you see miller also avoided oxygen in his experiments he uh, taken a reducing atmosphere and uh, if oxygen was not there in the early earth the ozone layer is absent then there will be ultraviolet rays which will be coming to our earth and that will damage all the biomolecules which are formed so without oxygen it is a big problem life cannot survive and if oxygen was there miller kind of experiments will not hold good so this oxygen is there the problem not there there is a problem this is a technical problem so the scientists they also found this left handed right handed molecules which are very unique in the you know, biomolecules and in racemic mixture we observe in natural chemistry how come such a selective you know what against molecules came into existence is a big question for the biologists to answer uh, from pure chemistry how such a complicated mechanism came into existence so there are many data many papers have been published which are challenging the reducing atmosphere they say that original that in a primordial atmosphere was having <coughs> oxygen so miller chosen very unrealistic primordial atmosphere means so miller himself says we really don't know what the earth was like 3 or 4 billion years ago so there are all sorts of theories and speculation the major uncertainty concern what the atmosphere was like this is a major area of issue and also national research council space studies board suggested that origin of life scientists should undertake a real examination of biological monomer synthesis under prim primitive earth like environments as revealed in current model of earlier so it says that we must re examine we must uh, uh, study uh, the origin of life from the present data not from the old data from the old ideas we don't want to uh, examine we have to update our knowledge on origin of life and one paper published the title is primordial soup theory is now expired this is the title and recent it published in 2010 so now scientists are completely rejecting the idea of darwin in the peer reviewed journals they are saying that we don't accept such a idea without having any complete proof next and polymerization is a big problem for chemical origin of life because we know there is entropy entropy doesn't allow the system to be more organized if you leave this room one attended this room will be disordered actually but a person is needed to order it again uh, you heat this room at 10 degree it will again go to equilibrium mm, that's why when you are dying you are dead your body degrades and it becomes simplified simple molecules you are there your body is maintained plant body is maintained uh, you cannot find molecules coming together a bacteria body or a frog body is forming but opposite is occurring when the death is occurring opposite occurring because 
life exhibits negative entropy. Schrodinger famously told that life exhibits negative entropy and how chemicals violated the law of entropy is a big challenge. Yes. Uh, and pre RNA world is being proposed because scientists were facing lot of problems with the RNA world. They have to propose some intermediate step and they propose pre RNA world and it's just a theoretical concept. It never obtained any significant experimental evidences. That's why many scientists are talking, you know, you can see go through my paper, like I referred many you know, recent you know, publications where they are saying this is only a theoretical concept but it doesn't have a concrete experimental support. Next. And RNA world, uh, many you know, well-known scientists never put their faith on that. Famously Crick, you know Crick and Watson, they are very famous in biology. Crick states, at present the gap from the primordial soup to the fast RNA system capable of natural selection looks for the white. This is a statement of Crick. And Orgel is a well-known biologist and he says, the precise event giving rise to RNA world remain unclear. Investigators have proposed many hypotheses, but the evidence in favor of each of them is fragmentary at best. The full details of how RNA world and life emerge may not be revealed in near future. May not be revealed in near future. This is a statement of one of the famous biologists. Uh, and DNA and protein world uh, dilemma, which came first? You, you ask a biologist, what is the starting molecule? I can say for this mic, there are so many you know, parts. You connect this part, this part, this part. You can begin with something. But you ask a biologist which molecule to begin with. Whether chicken is first or egg is first. You cannot say. You say which is to, where to begin with. Protein is needed for DNA and DNA is needed for protein. It's a circle. Which is the starting point? Which is produced or also producing? So how can you say which is starting? Biology is not so simple thing like chemistry and also the chemical reactions which are going in biological system is not like ordinary chemical reactions because ordinarily chemical reactions they are going towards equilibrium any chemical reaction starts and it ends but in biology it keep on continuing in inequilibrium state until and unless you are dead the reactions in your body will keep on continuing you are taking food again you feel hunger you are taking your food again you feel hunger such reactions will continue in your whole cell the actions are continuing, it's not stopping, it's not going towards a starting or ending point, not like that. Life is there means the reactions will continue. So such inequilibrium existence of reactions violates the general chemistry. Next. Previously scientists were having an idea that cell is very simple or uh, like the set of you know, organization uh, which can be explained by simple physics and chemistry but now they found out even a E. coli bacteria if by examination they say this is a city, a big city where all the actions are there going on simultaneously. <coughs> you cannot say that you know separately, separately different you know actions. So many actions are going on simultaneously. A simple chemicals, how they could produce such a complicated mechanism? Even scientist brain cannot conceive that actually. How would chemicals develop such intelligence? Is a big question. Next. So metabolism came first or replication came first is a big question. Because both are essential scientists are, there are big scientists who are supporting replication first idea, there are big scientists who are supporting metabolism first idea. And there are advantages and disadvantages of both the sides and they are fighting in the published literature. Some says no replication came first, some says no metabolism came first and this fight will never end. There is a big conflict with, between these two sides and it will never end and it will keep on continuing. Next. And also the skin. Your body has a skin and it has a special porosity. Every cell has a membrane. And that membrane does such a magical work. It can identify what's its food, uh, what's its waste, and so many activities it does in a miraculous way. And scientists saying primordial and that atmosphere is not sufficient to keep such a wonderful substance for membrane. That's what they are proposing. Membrane must have came from outer space. And scientists are saying if it came from outer space, that uh, planet, when it collides with our Earth, that heat will not allow such a membrane to survive. There are so many technical challenges for many such proposals. And scientists are saying that membrane production is a big challenge for uh, origin of life studies. Next. You see, uh, David Deemer. Uh, he is a well-known biologist. This photo published in Nature. What he did, 
uh, he taken the essential chemicals uh, and he put it in a big hole and put those chemicals in the hole and waited for a long time to see whether life will origin from those chemicals. After long, long wait, he said, no, life cannot origin from chemicals. This is published in Nature and my Guru Maharaj was there in one of the uh, lecture uh, Miller was giving in University of California. And after his lecture, he raised the hand, Professor Miller, I have a question for you. Saying, what is the question? Then he told, why are you worried about biomolecules? I can give you all the biomolecules. Can you combine all those biomolecules and produce life? Miller said that I don't know. Everybody laughed. You want to produce biomolecules. If somebody gives you biomolecules, you cannot produce life. Then why are you claiming that you will produce life in laboratory? After producing all those biomolecules, I can give you all brick and cement, everything. You produce the building if you have capacity. You say that I will produce bricks, I will produce cement, and then you will make it. I am giving you everything is there. Our present director told us, but Bhakti Madhav Puri Maharaj, you just put one needle in the cell. All the chemicals will come out. You wait for millions of years or use any mechanism. You cannot make that cell again alive. It is impossible. Next. So, present biology, they were thinking it's a combination of physics and chemistry, the, but it is not. It is not the combination of physics and chemistry. 21st century biology views organism as a sentient system, conscious system. Next. You see those two photos. There is some bar and a satellite. If you release a stone, a stone you can calculate where it will fall. A satellite you can calculate where it will fall. But if I release a living bird, can I calculate where it will go? Why? Because bird has its free will. It can decide and a satellite cannot decide. And you don't have any theory for free will in your physics and chemistry. You don't have. They see if Newton's first law. You apply Newton's first law on a marble and a tortoise. Both are in rest. Body in rest will remain in rest, body in motion, remain in motion. You see no external force. The tortoise starts moving. You cannot predict when it will start moving actually by any laws. So life cannot care for your any laws of physics and chemistry. You slap to Mark Madan, they apply third, third law of Newton and he will show another. You can slap. He will not react like this. Do you understand? So action and reaction principle, you cannot apply on the life principle directly. It's not possible. Do you understand? So life exhibits unique property, thinking, feeling and willing, which none of our physics, chemistry books are addressing. Thinking, feeling and willing. You have thinking? Nobody can show thinking. Please show me thinking. You are asking show me God. If I ask show me thinking, show me your mind, your mana. You cannot show it. But it is there, we are experiencing it. That is a false question. That is an idiot question actually. If you say everything, I will see and understand. Every day you are seeing sun is rising in east and going, going to west. And you will say sun is fixed and earth is moving. Your seeing has no value actually. What your knowledge has value rather than seeing. You never seen electron, but you accept there is electron. You never seen, nobody seen electron, but you have to accept there is electron. Because your knowledge has the significant value in the reality that you are understanding, you are considering. Next. Even that photo I have not discussed. Even the egg, this is a homogeneous, you know, what you can say, liquid is there. And how it knows, I have to become eye, I have to become lung, I have to become kidney. Those unique substances, ordinary chemistry don't do like that. What is happening in the uh, fertilized egg is a miracle actually. How that chemistry is going on, scientists are saying it's a miracle actually. So you see this uh, top down and bottom up approach, they were thinking some consistency if I find I can explain it. But you see if you every time clap, one bar is always flying. You go to bar and clap it, it's flying. But you ask, uh, chemically you explain. Why the bird is flying? It will be a big challenge for biologists to explain chemically. What chemical reaction occurring that bird is flying? It's very difficult. Actually. Chemistry and physics, even though there are some similarity you find in the behavior of the organism, you cannot explain in terms of physics and chemistry. So consistency is not the matter. The explanation in terms of sentience what biologists are finding, that is very important. Next. Next. My friend will discuss about this. So, you see, they studied this bacteria in the colony. In the colonial study of bacteria, now scientists like this, you know, uh, Sepiro, James Sepiro, and many other, you know, biologists, Ben Jacob, they're all saying that they cooperate. Bacteria cooperate with each other. If there is little amount of food is there, they cooperate. They have a group identity. They distinguish other groups. They sacrifice themselves. So much of activities they found out, they say that bacteria is sentient, cognition, consciousness, intelligence, which terms they are using.
So even bacteria intelligent, previously following the Christianity idea, they were thinking only man has the soul or consciousness. But now, modern biology recognizes even the ins insignificant living entity like a unicellular bacteria has sentience in the published literature. So you cannot avoid the study of consciousness and soul uh, when you are addressing life. When you want to address life, you have to discuss about consciousness and soul. Next. 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 Yes, so that's why we are saying a scientific study of the soul, science of the soul is very important in biology. Only studying yourself in the form of some chemicals means cutting the body into pieces and you are studying some chemical reactions. That is the, not the study of life. When you are cutting something, already life is lost. Already life is lost. So you study life as a totality, complete system. You cannot find a gear producing gear babies and a watch or watch giving rise to another watch. But life produces life. You, pro you got some, some hands and it keeps producing their kids. A laptop will not produce laptops. Then you can do good business with that. Uh, but it's not happens. In machines and chemical systems it doesn't happen. But life, uh, each element is also creating himself and other elements. A cell is producing other cells. So like this, it's very complicated phenomena. It's not simple physics and chemistry. Next. So abiogenesis is an insult to the life. You cannot insult anybody, you cannot kill anybody uh, by thinking in the chemicals. Because of that great disrespect we have for nature, uh, soul and uh, the God, we are experiencing the great environmental pollution. We have to buy water now. In Brazil, we have to buy air. Is it advancement of civilization? That for this basic, which is easily available, now we have to search where is the pure water, where is the pure air. Is this the advancement of civilization? Are we going towards a healthy environment? Uh, our own existence is being threatened by this all mentalism. Why? Because previously 200 years back, people were respecting everything as Lord's property. They were saving it. Now everybody, because they are, we are all chemicals, environment is chemical, nothing is threatened, we can do anything. That type of mentality of great disrespect came into existence. In the Western world, they are saying we have to develop proper respect to life, nature and God. This type of mentality is coming back again in science. Otherwise, we are going towards darkness actually. We are going towards darkness. A human life is made for a proper advancement towards the search for truth. But in the purpose of your education, nobody is teaching. We are going to many universities and colleges and asking, what is the purpose of your education? Nobody dares to even answer. One person answered, is for basic needs, for food. You are doing education. Is the purpose of education? For food? A dog or a cat don't need so much of education to fill its belly. And you need so much of education to fill your belly. It is the purpose of education. Education is meant to solve the basic problems of life. Who am I? I want to live. Why am I dying? Uh, who made this world? What's my relation with him? I want happiness. What is the science of happiness? These are all purpose of education. Everybody wants happiness. But which department is teaching about that? Science of the soul is addressing all those things. Uh, I should explain about science of the soul and Bhagavad Gita talks about this in depth. And we are missing all those things. Our laws of physics and chemistry only addressing dead objects, dead science. There is no living science. So we have to seriously question this educational system. And we are in, we interviewed one well-known biologist, uh, uh, CCMD, Center for Cellular Molecular Biology, uh, Professor Bhargava. He also said that we need to study this life more seriously. Because we missed, you know, still now we have not progressed much in the study of origin of life and many people are not doing that in the Indian context. So we have to make, see our director given very simple experiment. You are doing on plant studies. If you can do this experiment, it will be wonderful. He says that our Vedantic idea says life comes from life and matter comes from life. You take a plant and in a controlled environment with the controlled supply of mass and energy, you do an examination and see if the mass is increasing or not. Do you understand? You take a plant in a controlled supply of mass and energy, check it, mass input, energy input, mass output, energy output. You check if there is some difference. Life is producing mass. You can get that. Nobody done such an experiment. Try to do. This is our Vedantic idea. 
Rather than thinking matter is producing everything, matter is producing, you ask what is the foundation of your matter? What is the fundamental particle? Previously they were thinking there is atom. Now they break the electron, proton, neutron. Again proton is being broken, there are subatomic particles, quartz, boson. And you say what they are made up of? They say we still have to break them. They cannot come to any conclusion such breaking principle. It is not possible. Because their breaking also reaches the limit. If you break, you will find you find a particle which is smaller mass than electron, but size is bigger than that of electron. So much of problems they have with such limited way of knowing the things. Next. So we have we have books, subject evolution. We have a book by our founder Acharya, uh Sila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj, that teach on our organization name is Sri Chaitanya Saraswatma. So we have many worldwide centers and this book is very important. The role of consciousness in evolution process. We are saying that one species evolved into another species. There are so many breeding experiments. We not find uh, in any breeding experiment it crossed the limit. There is strict limit to breed, breeding experiments. A dog cannot give birth to a cow. It is not possible. A dog can only give birth to a good dog or a bad dog. Uh, in the breeding experiments, uh, a cow can give birth to a good cow or a bad cow. It is not turned into another species. They did so much of mutation experiments with the, that, uh, what you can say, fruit fly. And the, the legs are growing from mouth and so much of, you know, changes they are finding. But that is like the organism having good, what you can say, uh, uh, setup of, uh, what you can say, design originally. And now it is such a bad design that it cannot even survive. You understand? Diseased species is being found. That's what happened in, when they bombed in Japan. What happened? People have not become, you know, superhuman. They bond with so many you know, deformities. Do you understand? So, the mutations is not the answer. Uh, you see the fossil records also. You not find any single you know, evidence of intermediate species. Fossil record is against evolution actually. And also dating techniques have been challenged. In other presentations, uh, I have discussed in detail, because today only I am giving one presentation, but I have discussed in detail that evolution theory is being severely challenged in the Western world. And we have to be aware, in Indian context, still we are teaching vestigial organs. It's an outdated concept in the Western world. Still we have the old books actually. We have to update our books and read from the updated in the publications. What they are talking, which concept already outdated after 30-40 years, we will update that in our you know, textbooks. Why not? We see the recent trend and try to uh, teach our students from those topics and they should catch from that angle. Then that will give you more chances in higher universities more uh, recognition and more useful uh, what you can say productions that's why we are saying please read this book this will be helpful for you all thank you very much next so our two conclusions life can only come from life and matter come from life next we are not the only organization uh, see chaitanya sarsatmat is not the only organization all over the world you see there is a big change so many top class universities they are introducing the harmony of science and religion subjects because of the new term in biology. So Indians should also think about such topics, how to introduce science of the soul in biology. They are changing their trend. Medical sciences, all the medical science departments in Western world, they introduce a department of religion. Patients are being asked, uh, patients are asking doctors, please pray with me. And doctor has to pray with the patient in Western world. They are saying if doctor don't know the religious need of a patient, then he cannot address the disease properly. That's why he should know multi-religious idea. Then he can address the patient need properly. That's why they are teaching doctors about different religions. So that he can address properly uh, the patient's religious need. Every patient has a religious need. Next. Next. So this is a book every library should have. James is secure written this, Evolution A View from 21st Century. So this book explains the recent trend. Every library should have this book. He is a well-known biologist and he published many articles in Nature and Science and well-respected scientist. So you should keep this book and see what biology is doing this day, what it is explaining, and how it is going towards a new turn and rejecting all old ideas. Next. This is our center on the bank of Navadip Dham, Sri Chaitanya Sarasatma. You are most welcome to come anytime and get training on these subjects and help others to know these type of topics. That is the mission that we should as a scientist know the truth and explain others the truth. Next. This is my contact details. Uh, my email is there, my phone number is there. 
we have a website where we publish all these different videos. We interview also scientists, uh, different scientists. We publish YouTube videos in that website. You are most welcome anytime uh, to write any questions or any you know what I can say queries or comments. Most welcome. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, then you can ask. I assume these are questions at the end. Thank you very much for the conclusion that life comes from life and matter comes from life. Life. Yes. Uh, we'll measure, sir, the questions. Now I request you. Um, Prusatam Jagannath Das briefly uh, present his uh, lecture on the cellular sentience. Can we, sir, Das Ji? You can take uh, 10 minutes.
mutation is not the only source of change in the genetic structure, but rather the cell itself has the wherewithal to uh, monitor the, uh, the, the genetic structure to suit its own purpose. In other words, we cannot uh, say that, uh, that, that the information, that the conclusion of that, if you read the Shapiro's work, then you find that uh, we, we cannot say that the total the, the, the genetics or the, or the DNA molecule is the blueprint or, uh, of the uh, information in the cell, but rather the information is distributed. The information is distributed throughout the cell. And you cannot pinpoint a single molecule. In other words, a mechanistic project uh, was deemed doomed to failure. So therefore, many scientists, like one scientist was, uh, I think the name is Wiesel, and he was very well known for proposing this uh, tree of uh, life concept. This, you know, this, uh, through this uh, adjective, progeny gene transfers. And he also uh, writes finally that uh, we are thinking that there was gene transfer, progeny transfers between different species, and that might have led to species diversification. But the point is that uh, the advanced says that to achieve that, the cell must be a little bit, you know, consistent. It cannot be very well developed structure, because at that stage, the cell or the new living organism becomes very resistant to change. So therefore, uh, this uh, uh, the, uh, the amount of change that can be expected from a gene transfer is only very specific and limited, and it does not lead to a specific gene. You know. So, in other words, his idea was: as you get prokaryotes, eukaryotes, archaea cells, bacteria, different class gradations of cells, they are actually seem to be resistant to produce that kind of, you know, uh, what you say, total change. You just can't peel the cell apart and uh, redesign it into another form. It requires a different type of approach altogether, and all of these different you know, approaches have to fail. And so, therefore, he says in this paper that uh, in 2005, we say that biology has missed the theory of you know, its theory. We have a, we have a lot of data, but we have no consistent theory to explain the biological world. So, um, so in other words, uh, there is something limitation in the scientific methodology, and. Uh, because it is not able to talk about sentience. If I ask you a question, I will ask Bhagavan, do you think there is consciousness? And he was not you know, really answering it, but really he was actually a big person. And we asked him. And finally he was saying, whatever it is, it is only within various chemistry, nothing beyond it. But then when we asked to define it, then there is no answer. Really. But consciousness, but the, you know, how the modern scientists are recognizing that the role of consciousness is there? That is because the chemical reactions are not exactly following the laws of entropy and not following uh, simple push-pull laws, but rather they are using terms like error recognition, error, uh, what, you know, if you see the word recognition, the word cognition is in, in, in the middle. Means the, if you see the septic acid cycle or any other cycles, and there are feedback points, checkpoints, and there are uh, regulations on all these different criteria that uh, leading to the idea of sentience in uh, all living forms. Uh, because even those which don't have very developed uh, systems, like certain what are called distributive unicellular organisms, even they have uh, exhibit uh, you know, chromotaxis and other phototaxis, this type of active behavior, and uh, the cell cycle or the chemical cycle is actually a sentient phenomenon here. So therefore, sentience is the concept of life. If I ask you, what is the concept of life? And nowadays, they are saying there are no genomic units. The genes don't explain it really. If you take a DNA molecule and put it in a petri dish, do you think it is life or not non-life? You don't understand my question? You take a DNA molecule and put it in a petri dish. Is it life or non-life? Non-life. Non -life. But within the cell, in its normal behavior, we have to admit it is life, isn't it? So, therefore, uh, we cannot construct a life out of a DNA, but only when there is some kind of, you know, already existing chassis, that is protoplasm, then you can transfer some genetic material and can produce some living symptoms, uh, because it is already existing. So this was the point that was being raised against, you know, when he, when he designed that, you know, that you know, artificial cell, so-called artificial cell, which was, but when he coined that term, 
then Argo and others said this is the misuse of that term because actually it is not, not artificial life at all. But he was saying that I have designed a very big uh, this molecule, cascade of cassette of molecule, and because I inserted it there, so I have to you have to say this synthetic cell. But it is not a top-down approach. It is uh, sorry, it's, it's not a bottom-up approach. It's only top-down you know phenomenon. Uh, that means life already existing and we did something there. This type of experiments are innumerable. But nobody has ever, ever done the other, the other side. So going from that, um, then we have to say, uh, whatever your concept may be, that you want to you know, force in, it must be just against the reality. Reality must confirm uh, the truth. Uh, the reality must, uh, or your uh, concept must conform to the truth. Otherwise, it is a, only a mere concept. It is not yet science. So the question is that, if the scientists are coming into such idea now, sentience, in other words, if there is an intelligence already, which is involved in the, in the cell, cell cycle, then, if there, then how do the molecules explain that? This is the question. If there is mind, if there is intelligence, then how do the molecules explain that? As we say, uh, you, you can construct, there are many can, you know, options the scientists have given. I remember one, uh, on the Jaworski reaction, that you know, complex reaction of chemistry. So generally, it is not a stable type of you know mixture. It goes from different states. It means there are two, 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 two three different categories there. Uh, you know, in time there is variation. In sometimes there is space variation, and sometimes there is space and time variation. That means the color. There is some color change that occurs in the chemical reaction uh, in a cyclic fashion or in a periodic way. But it is not fixed. So sometimes they give examples like this to support the idea of your know, life as a chemical complex chemical reaction. And uh, I, I remember that we discussed that and we have uh, explained that actually uh, ideas like this idea of pure biology that is you know, what this dissipative structures, you may not have studied this subject, but in chemical engineering, advanced chemical engineering they reduce such topics. But dissipative structures don't uh, that means Steady state far away from equilibrium does not explain the uh, actual biochemistry that is going on. Like to go inside, even Manfred Eigen's Eigen's idea, the last this model, don't go beyond a particular molecular size, polymer size. So um, the question is that um, now I want to give okay, I want to give one simple example finally. And then I will conclude. Long, today's modern science, this idea is this. So they start with matter. And they start with equations, the laws of movement, design. And from that they want to explain everything. But, so therefore modern science does not deal with questions like why and purpose, goal oriented phenomena. It doesn't bother about it. But the question Aristotle said, that is the limitation of science. So therefore, in the Aristotle's idea, there are two more categories. But one important category is the purpose or the goal, is goal orientation. So therefore, suppose he give an example, there is a wall. You can explain the wall in terms of the bricks and in terms of some design equation, gravity. Heavy bricks should be on top, bottom, light should be on top, like that, in construct. So therefore, does that explain uh, everything about the wall? And he answered no, because it does not explain why, for what purpose the wall was constructed. Like if somebody says, why China wall was constructed, it is not answerable by science. I mean, those two categories. We have to prove purpose there. So because biological existence are all purposeful existences. Why do you eat food? To maintain the ability. Why there is error correction, error this feedback checkpoints within this thing? Because the cell or the living entity wants to maintain its species, identity. This reproduction, this all these different processes are actually meant to maintain its identity. Darwin talked about some of the fittest, but really it is a bad approximation of the idea that actually it is about self-maintenance of the species. So the Bhagavad Gita ontology is quite different from uh, the idea of you know, this modern science, and modern science is also incomplete. So one must know the idea of Bhagavad, that actually the consciousness is the origin, and from that everything, there is consciousness, everything is coming from within the consciousness. So, uh, and then Bhagavad Gita 15 chapter, first of all, I spelling 
directly to the material world is a inverted reflection. Means the entire light is coming as a reflection from a you know, higher source. But modern science uh, took a picture starting from matter and by a progressive you know, the process they come to this. And now there are you know, many questions that are in Darwinism and all post Darwinian and new Darwinian ideas. And even chemics, chemistry and physics has found its limitation there. So finally, our conclusion is that uh, the previous slide, light comes from light and matter comes from light. If we can study this and if we can include this within our you know, scientific study, then perhaps we will find a more, and so definitely we will find a more wholesome approach to reality. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Do you have any questions? Uh, we can take one or two questions. Yes, sir, we are have you challenges or comments from students and faculties? We spoke from your background, so you should dare to ask. Don't afraid. Any challenges? We are not cutting students' marks. We are not checking anything. Sir, it was said that there is no death for uh, Atma. There is? It means there is no death and we cannot yes. create Atma. Yes. So that is what uh, Mr. Lord Krishna told in Bhagavad Gita. Yes. So it means one person or one organism has got only one Atma. Is it yeah. or more Atmas are present in one individual? Actually, your body, there are many cells. No, I am asking about Atma. atma. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Your body has many cells and each cell has one Atma. You are the main proprietor. In your body also there are so many worms, germs are there. They have their own Atma, but you are the main proprietor. It's an organic whole system actually. When you die, they have depend on you, they have also have to die. You understand? You cannot separate those organisms separately. They are also dependent on you. No, Your whole not. body, you understand what I am saying? No, but that you are I, that is Atma. Yes. So when you say you are I, that is Atma. Yes. When that person is dying. Yes. So, see, when we talk about uh, holistically or in totality, yes. say one person should have one Atma. Not, uh, every no, 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 every person has only one Atma. Actually, the personality is, personality is coming from Atma, one Atma, but when you talk about the body, what you are identifying no, I am not talking about body. One yes, person, atma, atma. atma has an individuality, individuality, you understand? And that Atma has eternity, the proof is that nobody wants to die. And everybody wants happiness, everybody wants to know that is Sat, Chit and Ananda, that is the nature of Atma. And everybody experienced that. That is the proof of Atma. Nobody can show you by messing to that. But you don't want to die. That is there inherently in you. That is your nature actually. But we are dying because of our identity with this body. We are living to die. And Hegel told, die to live. If we die in our misconception of identifying ourselves with this body or chemicals, then we can live in the world of eternity. That is Atma. Atma is not dying. No, sir. Atma is not dying. No, sir. My question is very simple. I understood. Yeah. Atma is not dying. No, Only no, our no, body no. is dying. Is it not, sir? Yes. No, no, no. Atma is not dying. Yes. Our body is dying. Yes. So, Atmas are fixed in the universe. So, Atma, no. Atma is actually experiencing because of its consciousness. Atma is actually experiencing the world by its consciousness. If you have material consciousness, then you experience material world. Do you understand? Means every, everything, 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 like Galileo, when Galileo not came, you were thinking, sun is moving around earth. Where Galileo came and explained by experiments, even though you are seeing, sun is coming from east and going to west, still you think that sun is fixed and the earth is moving. So, if you can overcome your material conception of life, spiritual life is such an ananda, material life is uh, what you can say? Creation, maintenance, destruction. Material life is creation, maintenance, destruction. Janma, Muttu, Jaradayadi is the nature of material life. Spiritual life means Satchitananda. You have that inside, but outside is not manifested because you have material consciousness. If you can overcome, human life is given for that. But in Animals case, cannot do that. But in either case, Atma should be present. Yeah, Atma is there. Atma is there. That's why your question is coming. And Atma is experiencing. Atma is, is there. Atma is there. That's why your consciousness. If Atma is so, sun is there, that's why sun ray is there. Sun ray is compared with consciousness. Do you understand? Yes, sir. It's a help button now. No, your question. No, your question. Whether it's a single Atma or a multiple Atma. Yeah, the Atma is a big one. So this can be understood from the principle of life comes from life. 
like Jeeva Jeeva is the Jeeva number, one Jeeva is dependent upon another Jeeva for its existence in this world. So uh, this is uh, called the principle of negation. So this world, uh, actually the foundation is consciousness and there are different varieties of living beings. Uh, some are very low level of consciousness, some are higher level, higher level, higher level. That's a good point. Food cycle. So therefore, um, Hegel has given this example, when the cow is eating grass, it is proving by every chewing of the grass this principle. Because some people think the gra grass is annihilated by that process. But really it is not annihilated, it is subly, it is actually assimilated, something sublimated actually in the process. In other, in other words, what is posing as independent, posing as independent, that independence is being negated by a higher form of life. So other, in other words, this this consciousness, which is the predominating consciousness within the body, is actually dominating or negating the independence of these other life forms. But really, that is the illusion, because actually the living and being is a servant; it is not a master. So therefore, by in the form of death, that that, that independence or that proprietorship is also overtaken. So, like in, in scripture also says, the uh, human beings depend upon food for this existence in this world. And the demigods depend upon the human beings for their existence. And in the highest, in the highest sense, the supreme Lord, He needs to negate your identity for His own. This is the purpose. If you discuss purpose, you come to that kind of conception. So therefore, the hierarchy of existence is understood in this way. Thank you. So it means what they for the for it means to live. Yes, now you are you are in to live. If we every, can kill every, a bird, see, so that is not a crime. No. no. Actually, because you are saying, see, all living organisms are there. Yes, you see, you see, you see, I'm way. giving an example. In the border, there are army who are being given license to kill certain people. If that army man violates that law and kills some other man, will he be not in jail? So, Lord has given some license for killing. Patram, Kuspam, Palam, Dayam, and Bhagavad Gita, he says. You use that for preparing for me, not for you, for nation. Not for yourself. If yourself will kill somebody, then you will be in jail. For him, you have to prepare bhoga. And that prasad you take, that reaction will not come to you. But if you kill for yourself, even the rice has life. And that rice will come and kill you. That is karma, action reaction. But if you kill for law, that is yakya. They will get uplifted to higher bodies. You understand? And you take prasadam, you get spiritual consciousness. This is there. We are not taking vegetarianism. We are mahaprasad teriyam. We are not vegetarian. See, yes, yes. When, uh, we are not vegetarian, we are Mahaprasad. Whatever Prasad we are offering to God, He is not eating. No, no, no. That he is, is not eating. No, no, no. We are eating. No, that is, that is because of I your know. lack of vision. That is because of your lack of vision. You see, a, a no, no, blind it? man. Listen, listen, sir. A blind man, if I ask, oh, my dear friend, tell me how beautiful the rose is. From birth, he is no eye. And he don't know. Please tell me how it is. Oh, it is red. It is so nice. Oh, what is this? For him it is no use because he is blind from birth. But if somebody has no devotion, if I tell him God is like this, God is like that, it is useless to him. If he has some devotion, real devotion, then he can see those things. You have no such eyes. Brahmanjana Churita Bhakti Vilochana. He's told that law, appointment law, he can see, he can talk with the Lord. But you have no such uh, connection with him. You cannot see him. He is not your servant. When you completely surrender to him, then he will be revealed to you. He, you cannot reveal it with your brain. You trust, you know the trust? You are blind actually. And when Krishna came as Shanti Dutta, and then this uh, Duryodhana, he told, this is the right situation that we should you know, arrest him so that Pandavas will get defeated. And then Krishna showed him the universal form. Then those soldiers could not find what is beginning, what is end. They could not find. Then all Bhishma, Vidura, everybody started glorifying Lord Krishna. Seeing that, that blind Dhutrashtra, he thought, this great personality glorifying that Lord, if for a small time, if I had that vision, I could have seen that. He thought in his heart. And Lord told, no need of eyes, I am ordering you, you see me. Immediately he is seen. Okay, sir, but you understand? But, uh, for, for that, you need some vision. No, we have, no. You see in your mind, you see in your mind, I am telling you, you see in your mind, what is the color of your mind? You have not seen. You have not seen, no? But you have mind? We don't know. You have mind or not? No, we don't no, no, know. No, no, no. You don't know. We don't know. Then it is madness. Ah, you have anger, you have love, you have frustration. You say you have no mind, you don't know. 
It is not frustration. You see, you have to. See, no, you how do you get frustration? How you get anger without mind? No, no. no. Swami ji. How you get all those no, things? No, no. Swami ji. When, yes. when we are talking about science and we are discussing, yes. it should be rational. This is see, very rational. If, if I cannot see some mind, you cannot say he is mindless. No, no, wait. If, if see, you... Suppose, okay, in other yes. way I am asking. Yes. Yes. Is it true for Krishna to support uh, Pandavas? What? What logic he has got to support Pandavas? Yes, if you it is, see, you, you it is have to be educated in that discourse. No, you take in yes. Indian history yes. only the only the elder man, yes. only the elder man in the dynasty or in kingship, he has got the right to get that uh, means uh, what you call the property or kingdom. Even a small zamindar, he will give entire zamindari to the elder man, not to the younger man. He will get some food and he will stay there. But you see, there, you see, means what you call about Duryodhana, he has every right for this kingdom. Then how can you support and give it to Pandavas? It is illegal. Is it not? And we you are preaching that, that. And we are preaching that Krishna you is are the decider. Man. You are the decider of that. That's why death god is coming to teach you what is your condition. No, for you, for you also it is coming. For, for you also death god is That's coming. You are not going That's to live for hundred years. Yes? No, death god is not. Uh, yes. he not Krishna is telling Kalvasmi. He is coming for everyone. Even for Krishna, death god came. Even for Krishna also, no. even maybe for the other discussing. So let it let us be open. Anyway, it's a broad topic. Uh, Swamiji will be staying at Tirupati. You can close it with him, discuss your many things. No problem at all. The last and final question from me. So what is your advice for both the staff faculty and the students to be lead a peaceful life? Just one or two centers. But it's a broad one. Yes. Yes. But what is the question again? What advice advice for? for us to lead a peaceful life. Don't peaceful you? life? Yes. Actually, uh, first we have to know what is peace. Peace means when your senses are not bothering you, then you are in peace. When your eye, your tongue, your touching sensation, your smelling sensation, not dragging you this side, that side, then you are in peace. You eat food, getting more desire for food. Okay, you see nice things, you have more desire to see nice things. So like waves, the desires are coming like waves. So Goswami means who mastered the senses. He is Goswami. So our mind is above senses because we are allowing our mind to wander because of our false arrogance. We are facing this, you know, samsara. Minds only to teach to put the jiva in samsara, actually. This is the business of mind. That's why a guru is essential. Guru means he keeps you in sasam, discipline. Disciple means under discipline. Sisya means under sasam. So when you have such guru, pure Vaishnava guru, pure devotee, then he can give you discipline. With that discipline, you can use, you can be a student, you can be a professor, whatever you can be. The Arjuna was a fighter. He not told to stop fighting. But he only teach how to use your capacity in service of the Lord. Balmiki was a great poet and he used that poetic capacity in the service of the Lord. There was a great writer, Vyasadev, and he used that writing capacity in the service of the Lord. Whatever your capacity is, if you can learn under that Guru how to use that in the service of the Lord, then that is the perfection of human form life and that way you can be peaceful. Bhakti is Mukti Siddhi Kami Sakale Asanto Krishna Bhakta Niskam Atayev Santo means those who have Bhukti means some desire for enjoyment, some desire for liberation, Bhukti, some desire for Siddhi, uh, Kam, uh, different different uh, materialistic endeavors. All are uh, Asanto, they have no Santo. Krishna Bhakta Niskam, Krishna Bhakta only wants, oh Lord, what you want, I want to do that. He was not thinking, Gautam was not thinking, what will happen to this and that. What Krishna wants, I am doing. That type of niskam, for the satisfaction of the Lord, on self-forgetfulness, that is devotion. That stage, when you come, you will be free from any kind of, uh, what you can say, this peaceless, you know, this, uh, you know, what you can say, anxieties. Vaikuntha means, there is no anxiety. Kunta means, anxieties are here. Vaikuntha, beyond Swagra and Narko, beyond hell and heaven. That plane, if we approach, then you can get that. Otherwise, not possible. So you need some help. Uh, other than using the brain, you have to use a uh, surrender. Uh, then you know things. Challenging the authority of Lord, challenging the authority of Shastra will lead us to lower spaces, animal spaces. 
After many, many births, his ego will reduce. Then he will submit to me. Uh, taking mosquito body, dog body, cat body, uh, then he will understand what is Lord. Then he will submit properly. Now he has ego, because he is human, professor, the scientist, ego is there. Lord reduces that by giving different bodies. Take different bodies. Uh, dog will bark, uh, it's too, big will is too, happy uh, life. That life will teach you. Uh, to come to surrender. Uh, that is the process Lord has. So be humble. Respect Lord and scriptures. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Friends, uh, we had a very good uh, interaction, basically. So the soul and body, then cell and personality, these are the four words which were been under discussion for uh, last one hour. So, the soul and body, you should not uh, demarcate the soul and body. At the same time, the cell and personality. All the cells pull together to show some personality of an individual. Right? So, all these, uh, like the content which we have discussed uh, for the past one hour, should. Uh, bring out some change in the behavior of an individual. What we are organizing, the lectures or seminars, these are purely to impart some knowledge in your, uh, what you call the personality, at the same time, to see that there will be a change in your behavior. See that you will behave in a desired way. That's what uh, um, the Swamiji's were telling and our process were also is always cautioning. See that there will be some change, desirable change in your behavior. After this one class or one hour lecture, there should be some behavior change which will make you something better than yesterday. Right? So, uh, I hope uh, with this particular one hour discussion, we had some sort of uh, what you call, change in your uh, uh, behavioral attitudes. So, definitely uh, the discussion will give some fruitful results in our uh, student community. And uh, I thank uh, the Swamiji's from um, the Saraswati Mat West Bengal. They came on the way to deliver lecture. And I thank our beloved associate dean also for giving uh, uh, such a type of an opportunity uh, for interaction with the students. I thank our uh, um, Sarishwari Desire for uh, good discussion. This, these discussions are essential so that a monotonous lecture definitely it may not give you uh, for uh, what you call thinking. Definitely. The discussion will give us an opportunity to think, right? So I thank uh, sir and Venkai sir also for uh, and our professors, um, Subramanian sir and uh, Madam Speaker sir, madams, so for their valuable presence here. Uh, I thank one and all for uh, making this program a great success. Thank you. Thank you.